the Secretary for the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, Councillor Gary Melville, and the Assistant Secretary in the Division, Assemblyman Handel Beckles, reported to the media this week at Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. In terms of our road works, road paving continues in a number of areas. In recent times, we would have completed roads, including King Peter's Bay Road, um, roads in Golden Lane, the Bonacord area, Coffee River, and so on. Um, work has begun, or work began a few weeks ago at the Roxborough Bloody Bay Road, which is a road that has been very problematic for road users for a number of, for a long period of time. And these works have begun and are expected to be completed during the month of August. Uh, along the Windward area, we have not been able to do the quantum of paving that we would have liked, and we expect to have a number of roads in that area paved shortly between um, this, month, this, this coming month of August and September. We would also critically want to see, get the resurfacing of that area between John Dial and Mount St. George, or John Dial and Stolly Park on the Windward Road. As all road users in Tobago are aware, that is a very problematic um, area to traverse at the moment. We are, of course, trying to work in collaboration with WASA to ensure that all of the pipeline has been done, that the pipes have been tested, and there will be no leaks. And as soon as that is, that is confirmed and that is possible, we will resurface that stretch of road from John Dial to Mount St. George. Uh, we expect to start work shortly in terms of the widening of the Orange Hill intersection, widening of that area um, at the intersection of Orange Hill Road and the Claude Noel Highway, as, in the, as, as also, the, and also in the general vicinity of the Mount Marie and Orange Hill um, Junction to facilitate um, easy and safer usage by especially our st school students. The Roxbow Bypass Road, I want to give an update on that. That project continues to be a very important one for the division. We would have made a promise to the people of Roxbow and Environs in February that we would have that road done. It has really been done in, a, in three phases. One phase involves the preparation of the roadway um, using Rotten Rock and sub-base, and preparing a proper sub-base of Crusher Run and so on, in that whole area between Station Hill and Lamy. That phase is virtually almost complete. The second phase involves the construction of a bridge across the Roxborough River. And that phase is currently being finalized. The design is currently being finalized and we expect construction of that bridge to commence shortly because we have in mind a total time limit of around October of this year. And of course, the final phase would be the, um, doing the asphalt surfacing, layering, layering um, asphaltic concrete on the entire roadway. That phase should begin during the month of August. So we are anticipating that if everything goes as planned, we should have the Roxbury Bypass Road in use by the end of October. Um, 2014. Um, you will be aware also that we have just completed the, the two culverts at, at Middleford Road in Lambo, and I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the workers and the supervisors associated with that project for the work that they would have done there. That area is now transformed, if I might say so, in terms of the visual appeal and the safety for road users. The project would have cost just around $3.8 million, um, and we now have a roadway along that area that is now 24 feet wide, with each lane having to each, each lane being a 12-foot lane, just as, as we have on the Claude Noel Highway. And um, of course, as we would have noted before, it is really part of the Milford Road upgrading project. We are, we are hoping that we can have a contractor in place to begin work on the first bridge the first of those other three bridges, the bridge just after the abattoir. We are hoping to be able to start that within the next six weeks or so. And we are hoping to have designs and procurement done for the other two bridges so that by within the next 12 month period, we can have a very enhanced Milford Road and we can, that can be used now as a viable alternative archery to the Claude Noel because we, we recognize in Tobago that uh, the volume of our traffic continues to increase, more and more persons are buying vehicles, we are having more and more visitors to our islands, and so therefore we have to, we have to cater for um, additional roadway. 
Uh, in terms of the division, we have a major initiative about to start within the next week or so. That is the, the silting of the Argyle Swamp. Um, for those in the know, that area, the Argyle Swamp, is, very, is a very critical area for the village of Argyle. Um, but it is also a flood threat, and it is also a, a health hazard in terms of um, mosquito, mosquito breeding and so on. Um, all the wastewater from the various homes around there go into the swamp, and of course with storm water and so on coming from heavy rains, there's a potential for heavy flooding. The area has not been cleaned for a while, it has not been distilled in a while, and we are therefore engaging the services of a contractor who is going to utilize what they call an amphibian excavator, an excavator that can operate in water or in, um, so in slushy areas to be able to distill the, distill the swamp. We anticipate that that would bring significant relief to the, to the villages of Argyle, and we plan to also combine that with some enhanced draining in some areas in the Lamy area and so on to um, create a, a safer situation during the heavy, the, the heavy um, rain period or during the rainy season, and also a much healthier situation for the residents in terms of um, the mosquito population, especially at this point in time where we have concerns about dengue and that other disease, um, chikungunya. The chief secretary and his family would have taken up back residence at uh, Lowlands um, in the newly refurbished property. I would want to note that uh, there was a bit of a delay. We'd have anticipated that project to be finishing in April, but of course, as I would have noted before, there were some changes to the scope, some significant changes to the scope. The project at first was supposed to be a renovation that would have addressed a number of deficiencies in the property. Of course, when the demolition process started, they would have recognized that there were some other structural issues, and therefore, being a responsible division, we would have undertaken to expand the scope of the project, and therefore, the work that was done there would have been more than what initially anticipated. There were other aspects added to the, to the, to the work, including a, a significant change to the sewer system that would, have, well, that would have resulted now in the sewer system being connected to the plantation um, sewer pl treatment plant. There would have been addition of a, of a swimming pool, and there would have been enhancement of other, of other aspects of the property, including the uh, maid quarters and so on, that were not part of the initial scope. They were supposed to do a renovation. They were supposed to demolish certain areas of the house and um, rebuild those areas, right? Rewire, rewire the house and so on. Um, do over the plumbing, um, improve the lighting, and so on, right? Expand the master bedroom, expand the kitchen. Uh, there were a number of things that were, in, that were done that were not involved in that initial scope. Among those, as I said, were the pool, work on the guard boot, that was not part of the scope. Work on the maid's quarters were not part, was not part of the scope. Um, work having to do with the garage and the generator room, having to do with the fencing, um, having to do with, with having a parking area um, towards, the, towards the rear of the property for um, when there are certain events. Work having to do with paving. Um, as I said, the, 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 the entire working of the sewer system, all of those were items that were not on the initial scope. So because when it became clear that, the, that you could not just do a straight renovation, you had to really now go and redesign, redesign the house and, and rebuild it. The initial cost would have been much lower than what our final costs are. In other words, the final cost that we have um, for the project is more than the one point something million dollars that was announced initially. Um, our figures, figures provided by the administrator of the division to me at this point in time have a, a cost of just around $5 million for the entire um, refurbishment of the, well, uh, the rebuilding and refurbishment of the area. As I said, the scope has been expanded. There are a number of uh, aspects of the work that was done that were not in, on the initial scope, and that would have been the reason for the cost. At the moment, we are in receipt of a request from the president, from the office of the president, for 
some significant work to be done at the President House. Um, there's a tremendous amount of um, activity requested there. Um, we are looking again in that situation of a cost maybe in the vicinity of five to six million dollars initially because uh, the construction costs are not, for anybody who has been who is involved in construction, construction costs are not, they're not decreasing. And um, when you are doing that type of work to properties, oftentimes you come up against unanticipated costs. So I do not think, I think that it is the cost of the renovation work at Chief Secretary's residence is something that a division can justify. And I'm certain that um, in the days or so ahead, we might be able to give you a much more detailed breakdown in terms of how everything expanded. In the Scarborough Library, we would have set a time frame to have the library available um, upon the reopening of school. We are still holding to that time frame. Um, the expectation is that the staff of the library services should, be, should start utilizing the building sometime next week. If you um, pass there at the moment, you will see that some of the hoarding has come down because we are trying, the contractor is trying to complete the external works there. And we are also the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities along with the Scarborough Beautific Beautification Committee um, are engaging a number of activities around there to um, enhance the area surrounding the library. So we are proceeding, as I said, expectation that we can have that, the, that facility finally open for the reopening of school. Um, of course, the other major project, the Shaw Park Cultural Complex, you can come to the media briefing and not again say that uh, we continue, work continues at pace. Uh, our expectation in terms of a December um, opening remains. Um, I'm not, a lot of interior work is now uh, about to begin in terms of um, fittings, the fittings, furnishings, and so on. And um, as, any, as you pass by, you can notice that the, the external structure itself has been, uh, is, um, well, has been finalized. And um, even the external works to the yard and the paving and so on of the car park and that, that sort of thing is supposed to begin quite shortly. So we believe also that we're on target where that particular project is concerned. The study park quarry, uh, there are works being done, repair works, on the plant at present. Uh, the Northburg is being uh, heavily repaired. Uh, we're hoping that all repair works will be completed by the end of August. Uh, the estimate of the repairs is approximately $300,000. Uh, we expect that the efficiency of the plant would uh, be greatly improved uh, when we're up and running uh, within coming weeks. Uh, also, uh, in, in light of the study park quarry, uh, there's a revamp and um, aggressive uh, reorganization of, of the quarry and its structure uh, underway. And uh, that's also to improve the productivity and efficiency of the plant and uh, looking at the structure, the, the manpower on the plant, etc. Uh, these works will continue beyond August, but they're on the way of being examined by the administrator, Mr. Topping, of the division. Uh, for URP and the development, uh, there's a proposal for the 15th of September to the 15th of October, the one-month closure of the programs, 15th of September to the 15th of October. Uh, this allows us to plan uh, our new projects and, to, and programs for the new financial year. And so we're expecting uh, that this would be sufficient notice to, to the general public so that we understand uh, the shift uh, between September 15th and October 15th, the closure for one month, and then we reopen it October 15th. For the electoral inspector. Oh, the, yes. All right. Uh, what's, what's the situation with that as it, as it stands? All right. As of today, I j just had communication with the administrator. He would have had a meeting just completed a meeting with the president of the PSA, Mr. Watson Duke. This situation, the division apologizes again to the wiremen of Tobago, the electricians of Tobago, the homeowners of Tobago, the business persons of Tobago who have been affected by this impasse. The administrator of the division has been making um, significant efforts 
to create an end to this particular impasse. As you know, the, the electoral, electrical inspectorate, where they would have expressed reservations about the quality of the um, structure that the person they were being housed in. The ambassador has been seeking to find alternative accommodation. He would have identified and refurbished an area within the, the um, main office building at Shaw Park for use by the, by the um, workers of the electrical inspectorate. Um, he, they would have been engaged in discussions throughout that particular process. And my understanding is that the PSA um, is of the opinion that, the, that there should be some addition to the space identified and refurbished. So in other words, they're asking for a slightly larger space. Of course, we have had a number of initiatives aimed at resolving this crisis, and I'm, I'm hopeful that, um, that this time around that you know, good sense prevail, prevails with all parties, and we look at the greater good. We look at the, the, the make sure that our workers work in the best quality environment, but we also look at the greater good for the Tobago public. And if, based upon this morning's meeting, if um, the PSA were to hold that agreement, we at the division would be able to provide that additional space within the, uh, within the headquarters building, even though it's going to mean some, um, some adjustments to other units. And we should basically be able, be able to have the electrical inspector functioning um, by early next week. Yeah, if that, if that, if if we hold to that, because as I because as I've been not, as I've noticed, there are a number of occasions when the goalposts have changed in this in this discussion. So I'm only going based upon today's the last the last discussion I had with the administrator, based on a meeting he had this morning with the president of the PSA. Well, other than that, that means if that doesn't come true, we still at steel, mate. Well, as I said, we the division. Short of being able to build, we can't build a, a, a new elect electrical inspectorate office tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, we, um, we believe that we have options in terms of providing um, adequate housing for our workers without us incurring additional costs to go and rent a new building. And it's really about us putting our heads together and coming up with a proper solution because I, I would really like that impasse to, to come to an end because, as I said, homeowners, ordinary people in Tobago have been discommoded in the process and we really need to, to treat with that. Uh, the final question I'll ask on that particular topic is, has the, um, the electricians or the persons who are in charge of that, that particular department, have they earmarked any specific place that they would have liked? My understanding is that they would have, they would have brought to the attention of the administrator, probably the previous administrator, I'm not sure if they, they did it to brought the attention of this administrator, about a particular building in Scarborough. Now, I mean, I, and I, I don't want to speak for the administrator, but certainly I don't think that in normal employee-employer operations that employees choose the buildings that they, that they go to work in. Certainly you have to work together to find the best arrangement, but um, I'm not sure if it is uh, reasonable for employees to insist that they would work in this space and this, this space only. I think the division wants to ensure that it does things above board and it, and it, and it certainly treats with the, the rights and, and the rights of the workers. And therefore, the workers have a right to have an environment that is safe, according to, under the OSH Act and so on. And therefore, whatever arrangements we make, we are making in consultation with the OSH, um, with the OSH, um, the OSH people look like up at the office of the chief administrator and so on. We are not, we don't want, we are, we are not planning to do anything illegal. We are not planning to put our workers in danger, certainly not under my watch. Um, but as I said, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it sends the right signal for a, any group of employers to decide. You made reference to the desilts in, in the uh, guile area and the drainage to help reduce the risk of flooding. Yeah. Um, the question is, because I've observed it over the years, I'm trying to figure out why it is that the infrastructure works um, seems to, to kick off when the rainy season is already afoot, and, as opposed to before, beforehand. Certainly, I mean, that's, you, you know, that's, that's a good point that you raise, but you know, things have to be done, um, <laughs> things have to be done in a particular manner sometimes, or, or um, administrative bureaucracy and so on might interfere with it. Um, 
when I came to the division in February, that would have been identified as a priority project. And we certainly would have made arrangements to secure a contractor or contractors to provide quotations and so on to do that. That whole process has taken longer than we anticipated. And even when we could have agreed upon a contractor, there were some challenges in terms of the contractor being able to mobilize and get to Tobago because we have, we're talking about specialized equipment. So therefore they were in demand in other places and we couldn't get them at the time when we were ready. And now that uh, they're they are almost ready, the size of the equipment, the, 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 um, the, the, the logistics of transportation are also playing a role because um, until the new boat got here, that would have been a problem. And now that the boat is here, when the, when the equipment does come in, we may have to try to get it transported at a particular time of the week, maybe Saturday or Sunday morning and so on. So there have been, there have been a lot of the logistical issues in terms of us starting that project on time. But you're correct, we, we did want to do it in the dry season. We started um, planning for it since as early as February, March. But um, unfortunately, we come to this particular point because things did not go ahead as speedily. Well, I mean, with the construction, we had to hope that the construction itself doesn't really increase that risk of flooding because with Sure, well, sure. Well, I mean, you know, we, you, I guess what, what we're anticipating is that they normally have that little dry period sometime around the August, mm -hmm. the September period that, that we can be, make the best use of it that, during that period of time. Okay, so how long do you um, predict that that um, project will take? I think the, uh, this, the, the, what was discussed pre previously was something like three to four weeks. There is an issue, and there have been many complaints at the French Field area. Um, the French Field Bridge is mm -hmm. adjacent to the TSPC area. What happened is um, mm -hmm. the complaints that we received, I don't know if, the, if Works has been able to check out that area at all, but with the, the, the rain, because that, that river is a heavy river connected, that is the Bacolet River and so on. Um, when the rain comes down, the, the bridge is narrow, and it comes up about six feet or so, and it's actually washing onto the to person's lands, washing away the land and eating away the river and all of that. So I, I don't know if, if, if that may be part of some of the projects. If yeah, I know that is a project. That is, a, that is, a, that is a, some, definitely something that we have on the, on, in terms of our plans. I can't see here off the bat when we can actually start doing something about it. But um, it is something that has come to my, has come to my, my, my um, notice, come to my knowledge. I've been informed about it. And it's something that we would have had discussions with a level of the division. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, and I know it's something that we want to address, but I, I, I can't say offhand, give any um, dates and timelines for that at the moment. But it's something that we, have, that we are engaged in um, seeking to resolve. Okay, I don't know if you could enlighten me as to what will, um, what, what standard or criteria you would use to decide whether this project or that project or this project is a priority project, where the works will start and how soon they will start. Uh, again, a number of considerations. I think they oftentimes have to do with considerations of funding for, of being, of course, one of the main priorities, main, main areas, sorry, because, of course, we, we, we don't, just don't have enough funds to treat with all of the issues that confront us. Funding would be one. The number of persons impacted upon by a project would be another. Um, sometimes the, 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 just the proximity of other projects to that project, because sometimes it might be quite easier to get a team starting to work on a project when you have another when you have a, a, when you have persons mobilized in the area where you already have a a, a, work, a, a work base and an equipment and so on, it might be easier to mobilize as against trying to move a, a brand new team into. A, so there are a number of factors that come into consideration. Um, certainly, that as I said, that is a that is a project that the division aims to tackle. tackle. And I would probably make, I would probably, I could safely make the commitment that uh, it is something that we would ta try to tackle within the next 12 months. But I can't see, I can't give a timeline. Okay, until the assessment is made. Yes. Thank you for tuning in to another Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive um, Council Media Briefing for the week ending August 2nd, 2014.